Okay, so I want to talk about um, uh, basically some 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 groove and rhythm rhythmic basics for singers who don't feel particularly rhythmically strong, and this is kind of related to or it's a sort of a corollary to a video I made that was uh, about song structure for drummers. Um, and so let's just get right into it. What I'm going to do here, I, I'm going to assume that you're the kind of person who, as a singer, you know, it's not that you don't have any rhythm, it's not that you don't feel it in your hips, but that you, um, you don't have any formal understanding of rhythm and that you're just kind of doing it by feel, by instinct, by what sounds right, but that you don't necessarily have a different way to describe it or an analytical way to describe it, I should say. So I'm going to give you that analytical way and you can choose to do with what you wish. You can either really delve into it, um, really adapt to it, or just be kind of peripherally aware that it exists and you've heard it described at this point. So here we go. I'm going to talk about three kind of pieces of jargon. I'm going to talk about the pulse, the groove, and the grid. So the pulse is the count, is, is that piece that the aforementioned piece you're feeling in your hips. It's this, you know, we are, we're counting, like, tapping your foot, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now the groove is the specific pattern. You can think of it as it's in the drums or it's in the rhythm section writ large. The drums and the bass and the rhythm guitar come together to, to make this sort of groove that you feel that's a specific pattern that's kind of like the fingerprint or signature of yeah, whether it's this song maybe it's so maybe it's so specific that just hearing the groove makes you know immediately what the song is or it's just it's rich enough that it gives you a sense of like where you can go and that's really what it's intended to do is to to imply where you can go uh, where 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 it would feel right to go and that is the grid the grid which underlies the groove is kind of like the graph paper the lines on graph paper that most everything here is going to rhythmically line up with not everything you can get a little spicy a little sauce you can throw a polyrhythm in you can throw something that belongs to a different grid over here for a moment and it'll feel a little you know feel a little neat and dangerous, um, exciting. But the groove is definitely gonna imply, you know, where these lines are. Uh, and, and that's the, you know, what the, the, the more technical term for this is what the subdivisions are. So let's hear how you kinda would intuit that from listening to a groove. And the first thing that, that's gonna happen just by convention in most popular music, is we come to this fork in the road where the pulse wants to divide into either threes or twos. So it's either gonna go three, then into maybe into six from there, or it's gonna go two and then into four. We also have one where we go three or skip three and go into six, and then a 12, but we don't need to talk about that. You, you get the idea. You, you can keep on going with those. So here is a pulse. One, two, three, four. Da 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 da. Boom boom. Ba da 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 da. Boom boom ba. Da 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 da. Do 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 da 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 da. Bo bo ba. That's the groove, right? Whatever it is, and the bass could be going do 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 bat go do 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 that whatever something like that. We feel it. We got it. And the grid that's under that is we came to the fork in the road and we went two and four, like this. Da da. If I was going da 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 do do da 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 da, we went over here. Da 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 da. One and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. That's sixteen notes in the four pulses, right? Four 
two of balls. One, two, three, four, two, like that. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, but it would be one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, like that. So that's one groove suggesting its grid of 16th notes, straight 16th notes, and feeling that from the groove and aligning yourself to the grid, whether that's, you've been doing that probably your whole life as a musician by feel, but now you could also know, be cognizant of what you're doing. Now, on the flip side, let's do one that breaks into threes. Uh, one, two, three, four. Da 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 these split into threes, so like shuffles and blues, swing patterns and jazz, and you hear these things also in Bach music. So like uh, Rosanna by Toto is one that famously actually splits into sixes. Like that. Uh, we're not going to go down that road, but you can do some active listening and sort of think to yourself, okay, I'm hearing this groove. Where does this break? Does it break into threes? Does it break into twos? Does it want to have four to a pulse? Does that feel right, sound right? Or does it want to have three or six even to this pulse? Does that feel better? Does that feel more native to what I'm hearing in the groove? Okay, so um, I think that actually probably is good to go. I'll, I'll show you as a singer like what you can do from there, which is, okay, instead of just feeling it, you can be aware of it and you can decide to be very tight to it. You can decide to really align yourself and be part of the groove as you sing, you know, to be hyper complimentary, to be a singer who is really tight rhythmically, rhythmically aware and who makes conscious decisions to loosen up, to deviate, to get a little bit elastic, and snap back. Like it gives you a whole bunch of new choices that you can master and you can choose rather than just stumbling into and kind of being uh, constrained by um, you know, sort of the limits of your own understanding. So I'll take that first groove. I got the wicked man's feet with the dead man's blues. I'm bundled in a blanket with only you to thank So some of the things I did there, and, and that's one of my songs, but um, some of the things that I did there, and I, I did a little differently than I normally do it just for demonstrative purposes, but some of the decisions I made in terms of being tight to the grid included that even my breath and even my like kind of sub-verbalizations, little uh, uh, and mm, and any sort of intermediary sound, everything aligned with just this, this grid. I was expressing the grid with these brushes here. Everything lined up with one of those, every single thing. And furthermore, not only did they just line up, but within the fact that the once lined up, I chose to accentuate 
certain syllables that occurred to me as being strong in the grid. Tuk -tuk 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 -tuk, you know, one and two, obviously, so I'm taking this backbeat, but I also have this da 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 oh oh but da 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 oh but but wicked man's fever, the dead man's blue, zambon in the blanket, but don't lay you. So taking those things and letting them pop when other things are popping, I could be doing that by feel, or I could be doing that by design. Uh, and that's the choice that you have when you understand what's going on, how the rhythm of the song is structured. Um, all right, so hopefully that's some stuff you can chew on and uh, get out there. And like I said, do some active listening and see how much of this, you know, does this open your ears or not? Is it interesting? Does it give you new things to think about? Does it, you know, broaden your horizon? Does it make you, you know, kind of salivate or does it stir your imagination to to do something different or to try you know to do all that stuff then great give it a shot and if it seemed boring and definitely way too long you're not even here anymore then you know you won't do that and that's okay too because i love you all i love you just for clicking and playing the thing even for 30 seconds that's great thank you so much um, and uh, hopefully this was helpful in some sense, and until the next time.